Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, you will learn how we can send a post request to the server from our React application. In the last lecture, we created this Firebase database. Now, a Firebase database is a NoSQL database. That means in Firebase database, we don't have tables. Instead, we have collections. And in that collection, we can store documents. A document is basically a JSON object. So in this Firebase database, I want to create a users collection. And in that users collection, I want to store some users. We are going to create the user from our React application. So if I go to this project here, I have created a new React project. And when I click on this add user button, it is going to show us a form. And in this form, we can enter some details. And when I click on this create user button, it is going to create a user inside this Firebase database. So basically, in the users collection, it is going to create a user with the details which we have entered in this form. When we want to create a record or add a record in the database, from our front end application, we send a post request. And with that post request, we send some data. And that data gets created in the database. So let's go ahead and let's write the logic to send a post request and create a user in the Firebase database. Let's go to VS Code. And here I'm in the app component. And in this app component, I'm using two other components. This user details component. So basically, this user details component is going to show all the users from our Firebase database. And then we also have this user form component. Now, if I expand this components folder, and if we go to this user form component, here I have written some HTML to display this form in the web page. Now, whenever user enters something in these fields, we want to capture that value. For that, we can use useRef React hook. So in this user form component, I'm going to import useRef from React library. And now on each of these input elements, I'm going to add the ref attribute. But before that, let's go ahead and let's use this useRef to create some variables. So the first variable which I'm going to create is fname ref. Okay, so this fname ref will store a reference to this first name input element. In the same way, let's go ahead and let's also create a variable which will store a reference to this last name input element. And I will call it lname ref. In the same way, let's also create a reference variable for email. Let's also create a reference variable for password. Then we also have this country dropdown and this city dropdown. So for that also, let's create reference variables. And finally, let's create a reference variable for this date input. Let's call it date ref. And to this, let's assign this use ref. All right, so we have created these reference variables. Now let's go ahead and let's add this ref attribute on each of these input elements. And to that, let's assign the respective reference variable. So to this input element, we want to assign this f name reference variable. Then to this last name, we want to assign the last name reference variable, this l name reference variable. To this email, we are going to assign this email ref. To this password, we are going to assign this password ref. Now I'm not going to add any reference variable on this confirm password input element because currently I'm not adding any validation in this form. Okay, so even if the password entered in these two input elements are different, we are going to read the password from this first input element, this password input element, and we are going to store it in the database. All right, let's also add this ref attribute on this country dropdown. So the name of the variable is country ref. Let's copy it and let's specify it here. In the same way, let's add a reference variable on this city dropdown. And there, let's specify the reference variable as city ref. And finally, let's also add a reference variable on this date of birth input. And to this, let's assign this date ref. All right. Now, when this button will be clicked, this form will be submitted. And when this form will be submitted, 
on this form we can listen to on submit event okay so when the form is submitted we want to execute some logic so to this on submit event handler let's assign a function let's call it on create user and let's go ahead and let's create this function so when this form will be submitted this function will be called inside this function we are going to create a user object so let's create a variable let's call it user and to this let's assign a set of curly braces and inside this curly braces we are going to specify some properties let's say the first property is first name and to this we want to assign the value which the user has entered in this input field in this first name input field so for that we have this f name reference let's copy it and on this we can call this current property and on that we can access the value property so it is going to return us the value which the user has entered in the first name input field and we are assigning that value to this first name property let's do the same thing for last name email country password city and date Okay, so here we are creating a user object with these properties. Now, for now, let's go ahead and let's log this property in the console just to check if we are getting the proper value or not. So I'm going to log this user object. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and let's refresh the page. Let's click on this add user button here. Let's enter some values. and let's click on this create user button let's also inspect the console here you will notice that nothing has been logged here now here we also have this warning but let's ignore it for now but you will notice that nothing has been logged here that's because when we clicked on the submit button the page gets reloaded that's the default behavior of a button when we use it inside a form so what we need to do is we need to prevent this default behavior for that, we know that whenever this form will be submitted, this submit event will happen. And when this submit event will happen, to this, we have assigned this event handler function, this onCreateUser function. So this function is going to receive that event object. Right. And on this event object, we can call prevent default. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. Let's click on this add user button and let's try to add one new user. Let's click on this create user button. And now you will notice that an object has been logged here. If I expand this object, so here you can see the values which we have entered in this form. So first name is John, last name is Smith. Then this is the password which I entered. Here the city is Delhi. So that's what is selected here from this city dropdown. Country is India. That's what it's selected here. Then the date of birth is 19-8-2022. So that's the value you will see here and email is johnsmith at gmail.com so that's what you will see here so now we are able to capture the value which the user is entering in this form and using that value here we have created an object now we want to store this user object in our firebase database for that we are going to send a post request and with that post request we are going to send this user object in the body now I'm going to write the logic of sending the post request to the Firebase database in our app component. So in the app component, let's create a function. Let's call this function on create user. And this function is going to receive the user object. So I'm simply going to call it user. And from within this function, we are going to send a post request. Now in order to send a post request, I'm going to show you two ways. The first way is by using the fetch API. The fetch API is provided by the browser. And the second way is by using a third party library called as Axios. So first let's see how we can send a post request using fetch API. So for that we can simply call the fetch API 
the fetch function you can say and this fetch api expects an endpoint to which it needs to send the post request as its first argument and for the endpoint in the last lecture we learned that we are going to use this url so i'm going to copy this url and let's pass it here so we should pass it as a string so this is the url of the database now in this database we want to create a users collection so for that i can simply say slash users dot json if you want to create a movies collection then after this slash you can specify movies dot json if you want to create a customer collection after this slash you can specify customers dot json so with this name the firebase database is going to create a collection so this endpoint this url is the first argument of this fetch api then the second argument is an optional object and here inside this object you can specify some options so for example we want to send a post request for that we need to use this method property and this we need to set to post then with this post request we also want to send some data we want to send this user object for that we need to specify another property which is body and to this body we are going to assign this user object now firebase database expects the data in json format so this user is a javascript object so first we need to convert this user object into a json object and to do that we can use this json.stringify to convert an object into its json format okay so here we want to convert this user object into its json format okay so using this json.stringify method we can convert a javascript object into its json format along with this we can also specify other properties for example headers and to this headers again we need to assign an object and inside this object we can set some headers for example we can set the content type so this content type tells which type of data we are sending here we are sending json data so for that we need to specify application slash json here we do not need to specify this header because the default content type is always application slash json but i just wanted to show you that you can also set headers using this fetch api inside this second argument all right so this fetch api is going to send a post request because here we have specified the method as post and once the post request is successful we are going to receive a response now this response will not come immediately it might take some time so here we need to wait for that response so what we can do is this fetch api is going to return a promise on that promise we can use this then method and this then method expects a callback function as its argument so let's pass an arrow function here and this callback function is going to receive the response so here let's specify a parameter let's simply call it response you can name it anything but in this argument which you set here for example instead of response if i call it resp so in this parameter you are going to receive the response which this fetch api has returned which this promise has returned and for now let's simply go ahead and let's log that response okay so whenever this method will be called it is going to send a post request to this url now when do we want to call this method we want to call this method whenever this create user button is clicked that means whenever this form is submitted so we want to call this on create user function when this function is executed so from within this function currently we are logging the user object but inside this on create user i want to call this on create user of this app js component for that we need to pass this function from app component to user form component and we already know how to do that for that on this user form i am going to create a props an attribute let's call it on create user and to this i'm going to assign this function and again remember that here we don't need to use this parenthesis because here we don't want to call the function we simply want to assign a reference of this function to this attribute now with this name 
a property will be created on this props object. So what we are going to do is instead of logging the user object, we are going to call props dot on create user. Okay, so here we are calling this on create user function and this function is expecting a user object. So we are going to pass this user object to this function. So with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and let me refresh the page. Let's click on this add user button. Let's enter some details. So let's say name is John, last name Smith, email address johnsmith at gmail.com. Let's provide some password. Let's select country as Germany, city as Berlin. Let's specify a date of birth. So I'm going to select one year. Let's say John was born in maybe 1993, June 12th. Okay, and John is a male. Let's click on this create user button. And let me open developer console. Here you can see a response has been logged. If I expand this response, you can see here we have the body of the response. Then we have the headers. Then we have the status code and all those things. Okay, so here we have got some response from the server. Now let's go to our Firebase database and let's see if that user has been created. So you can see a collection called users has been created because that's the name we specified in this URL, as you can see. And if we expand this users collection, here we have one object, we have one data. Okay, so from our React application, we sent a post request and using that post request, we created a user. Now, this string value which you see here, it is the unique ID which has been assigned to this object, to this JSON object. And this will be assigned automatically by the Firebase database. Okay. So this is how you can send a post request using Fetch API. Now, I also mentioned that we can also use a third party library called Axios. So let's also try that out. For that, first we need to install Axios. And to do that, I'm going to open a new terminal. And here I'm going to type this npm command npm install hyphen hyphen save and here we want to install axios let's press enter and let's wait for some time so axios has been installed now let's use this axios library to send a post request so here i'm going to comment this code and let's go ahead and let's use axios so this axios is an object and in order to use this object, we need to import it from Axios library. Okay, so here let's say Axios dot post because we want to make a post request. And to this post method, we need to pass two arguments. The first argument is the URL to which we want to make the post request. For that, I will simply copy this URL and let's specify it here. Then the second argument is the data which we want to pass. Here, we want to pass the user object. Now here, we don't need to convert this user object into its JSON format. That will be taken care by this Axios object. And this Axios.post, it is also going to return a promise. So on that promise, we can use this then method. To this then method, again, we can pass a callback function. And just now we learned that this callback function is going to receive the response. So let's call it maybe response. And again, we simply want to log that response in the console. So for that, let's say console.log response. Okay. Now, if you only want to log the body of the response, then in that case, on this response, you can call a method called JSON. Okay. So it will only log the body of the response. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's go to our React application. And let me refresh the page. Let's click on this add user again and let's create a new user. Let's say name is Mary. 
last name is king email let's say mary king at gmail.com let's provide some password then let's say she's from usa new york let's provide a date of birth so for that let's select the year maybe 1986 july and 17 all right and she's a female let's click on this create user button but before that let me clear the console here let's click on this create user button all right here we have an error that response.json is not a function that's because with axios instead of using response.json we need to use response.data okay let's save the changes again let's go back to our web page but before that let's see if that object has been created so here the object has been created so we did receive the response but since we were using the json method on that on that response that's why we got this error okay but the data has been created here the user with this name mary king that has been created here so now in this users collection we have two users now let's create one more user so i will clear the console again let's say here name is steve last name may be jordan let's say email address is steve jordan at gmail.com specify some password let's say he's from uk london let's select a date of birth maybe 1988 october 22 and he's a male now let's create the user so now we are getting the response okay and if i go to the database here we should have another user object with this name steve jordan all right so this is how we can send a post request from our react application we can either use this fetch api or we can use this third party library called as axios for that first you need to install it from npm then you also need to import this axios object from this axios library and then on that you can use this post method this is all from this lecture in the next lecture let's see how we can fetch data from our database using get request from our react application